Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back to another one of my evidence-based medicine videos. Now, in a previous video I did on GLP-1s, I mentioned that there may be some cardiovascular protection benefit with that class. Now, you were thinking that I was just making stuff up because I wanted to make my video sound more official, but I have data to back it up, and so I want to go through some of that now. The LEADER trial, published New England Journal of Medicine in the summer of 2016, took Victoza versus placebo, and they compared it head-to-head -head and looked specifically at cardiovascular outcomes. There was 9,340 patients enrolled, and the primary outcome was a composite of first occurrence of death from CV causes, non-fatal MI, and non-fatal stroke. Looking at some of the inclusion criteria, obviously patients had type 2 diabetes. They also had to have an A1C that was greater than 7%, and there was two different age ranges. So patients who were 50 to 59, they had to have one cardiovascular condition. So whether it was PVD, kidney disease, stage 3 or more, they could have heart failure, stages 2 and 3, and etc. Patients who were 60 years and older only had to have a cardio risk, cardiovascular risk factor associated with them. So it could have been proteinuria, hypertension, specifically with left ventricular hypertrophy, so on and so forth. And now if you look at the supplemental information associated with this trial, there's a huge list of inclusion criteria to kind of look through. So make sure you take a look at that. Just to mention a few of the exclusion criteria, patients who were taking or using a DPP-4 inhibitor before the start of the trial or rapid-acting insulin before the trial were also excluded. They could be using long-acting insulin. Also, patients were excluded if they had a past medical history or a family history of multiple endocrine neoplasia 2 or medullary thyroid cancer, which that's a black box warning for this class of medications, so that makes sense why they would have made that an exclusion criteria. Now take a look at this actual results from the trial. Primary composite outcome, 13% event rate in the liraglutide group, 14.9% in the placebo group. Was significant difference with a number needed to treat of 53. Now, all-cause mortality, number needed to treat 71. Uh, cardiovascular mortality was also significant. Then they looked at microvascular events. Uh, that was significant when they combined nephropathy, retinopathy all together. Number needed to treat of 77 for that. So we're definitely getting some statistically significant differences here. And, you know, as far as number needed treats go, they're not, not too bad. Now, they did look at, like, stroke by itself, um, MI by itself. Those didn't really seem to be significant. So it seems to be like the cardiovascular mortality and some of these microvascular events that are really driving the, uh, the primary composite. But we are still having cardiovascular benefit versus placebo. Now, Victoza is not the only trial to try to get this, these uh, results and, and prove that this class has cardiovascular protection associated with it. So lixacinatide, uh, Adlixin is the brand name, if you're not familiar with this. It's one of the new kids in the block, at least in the U.S. And this trial, the Elixir trial, patients had to have an acute coronary event within 180 days of screening. And at the end of the trial, they went back and looked, and there was no difference between lixacinatide and placebo. Now, they spun this in a positive light and said, look, we don't have any cardiovascular adverse effects associated with our drug, which is great, and especially with the concern with cardiovascular outcomes or cardiovascular adverse effects with DPP-4 inhibitors. So that's a positive thing that this trial showed. However, when you, they tried to meet the criteria for superiority and show benefit, they're, they're, that wasn't there. Some more data that we have, the SUSTAIN-6 trial was published. Now, this was concerning semaglutide versus placebo. And if you remember back from uh, one of my other videos, semaglutide is Nova Nordisk's once-weekly GLP-1. And it's not currently FDA-approved, but it probably will be this year. And the trial was set up really similarly to the LEADER trial. And the composite had a lower uh, event rate in the semaglutide group with a number needed to treat of 44 couple other trials that are on the horizon. We have the Harmony Outcomes trial, which is Tanzium versus placebo. 
And the one that I'm really excited about seeing is the Rewind trial. Now, Rewind is Trulicity versus Placebo. And the reason I say I'm excited about this one is because, you know, I talked in one of my other videos that Trulicity is the only once-weekly GLP-1 on the market that has met the criteria for non-inferiority when compared directly to Victoza. So that's already got the, the benefit, in, as far as I'm concerned, with A1C lowering. If we can also prove that it has cardiovascular benefit as well, then that's going to make a really strong case for picking Trulicity over its competitors. Again, that's just my opinion, but uh, I want to hear what you guys have to say about it. And that's all I got for today. Thanks for watching.